Uh, I've heard uh, that they are planning to establish a library um, and uh, I would like to donate two books as a starting point for that library. Be careful. Yeah. And in fact, uh, I, bought, uh, I brought some more copies of these two books. One of that is my PhD thesis about uh, the history of the Baluchi language. And the second one is edited by Karina Jahani uh, and Paul Titus and myself and contains some articles uh, from several people present here, like uh, Sabir Badar Khan, Hoshang uh, Nurai, uh, and ourselves. Um, and these books uh, are available for uh, 40 pounds each. And this is a special reduced author's rate. Um, normally they are even uh, more expensive. Um, and uh, if you want to have one, uh, it would be good to get one before four o'clock because then my husband is uh, coming and it will take uh, the rest with him because I can't carry uh, all of them. So uh, if you want something, uh, then please uh, get hold of a copy before four o'clock. Now I'm hoping that this machine will allow me to start. Okay. Okay. I will talk to you about an issue about which you know much more than myself, which is uh, Baluchi dialectology. Um, uh, as uh, all of you know, um, the Baluch speak in different dialects. Uh, those uh, on the coast speak uh, differently from those further inland. Um, and uh, for example, the Marie and Bukti uh, speak still another dialect. Uh, so uh, I am asking uh, your apology for speaking to you about something uh, about which you are more expert uh, than I. Uh, so, um, in order um, not uh, to uh, be boring for you, I selected a topic uh, which might be not so accessible for you um, and I want to speak about uh, the history of research about Baluchi. Some of the material uh, is in German, so I will a bit focus on that because uh, I don't uh, suppose that so many of you are speakers of German. Um, so, uh, my presentation will be, uh, bi be biased towards these. Uh, sources. Uh, first of all, we need to clarify some uh, terminology. Uh, nowadays, um, linguists uh, talk about uh, three dialect groups of Baluchi, um, Western Baluchi, Southern Baluchi, and Eastern Baluchi. Roughly, uh, this uh, means uh, that uh, Southern Baluchi is uh, spoken on the coast, and uh, Eastern Baluchi uh, in the east, uh, and uh, the rest is basically Western Baluchi. Some of you will know these terms more from the tribes associated with these dialects um, and uh, some tribal federations. So Western Baluchi is also known as Rakhshani uh, dialect, Southern Baluchi is also known as Makrani, um, and Eastern Baluchi are uh, the dialects of the Mari, Bukti, and other people. So um, how did uh, people come to know about Baluchi at all? Uh, how did material arrive in Europe? Um, maybe uh, you uh, might already suspect how this happened. It was uh, the British presence in British India uh, that produced uh, the first sources. A number of people um, collected material, wrote ethnographic um, and anthropologic articles, and produced uh, some grammatical sketches, uh, texts, and glossaries. Uh, so um, much of this um, was in the dialect uh, called Eastern Baluchi by us. Uh, these are the items marked by an asterisk uh, on this list, um, while the thing uh, marked with uh, such a star thing uh, are from other dialects. Um, in addition uh, to uh, the publications, there are also th three manuscripts uh, which are kept in the British Library um, here in London. And this is a picture from the oldest of this one, which might be uh, approximately from 1820, so uh, nearly uh, 200 years old. Uh, that's the oldest Baluchi manuscript uh, existing. Uh, so uh, these uh, manuscripts uh, and some of the sources became to be known uh, in Europe, uh, and uh, linguists uh, started uh, to study it. Um, and they uh, saw rather soon that uh, Baluchi is an Iranian language. Uh, this was published by two people independently from each other. 
Um, and they also saw that Brahui is a Dravidian language. So uh, who were these people? We might ask this uh, Christian Lassen and this Friedrich Max Müller who published these things and why were they interested in Baruch at all? Uh, so um, first of all, Christian Lassen who was the first one to state that uh, Baluchi is an Iranian language. Um, he was a Norwegian uh, Indologist and he was professor for uh, Indian languages and literature in Bonn University. Um, he produced many works on Indic languages, editions and translations of Sanskrit texts, and he was also one of the first uh, to make an edition of the old Persian cuneiform inscriptions. <clears throat> uh, the other person who published that uh, Baluchi is an Iranian language was Friedrich Max Müller um, from Germany, and uh, later on he lived in Oxford and had a professorship for comparative theology. Um, he produced many, many editions and translations of uh, Sanskrit texts um, and works on comparative li religion, and he's uh, very much uh, known and very appreciated in India uh, until this day. Uh, so uh, these were two professors of uh, Indic languages, uh, so, and they were uh, interested in these sources because, first of all, uh, when a language becomes known, it's possible uh, that uh, it belongs to that region where it is found. So it uh, was thought that it might be related to Hindi or so, uh, but uh, these two people saw, uh, well, it, it is an Indo-European language, uh, but it's not Indic, it is Iranian. And uh, since um, the Baluchi uh, language was um, uh, looked at together with the Brahui language, they also saw that Brahui is not related to these languages at all, uh, it's a Javanese language. Uh, so um, now we established uh, that Baluchi is Iranian, uh, so, and as soon as this became clear, uh, the scholars of Iranian studies took over and started to look at the material. Um, so this was in fact very soon, um, only a very few years uh, after uh, people got uh, the material into their hands. Uh, they already published articles uh, talking about Baluchi. Uh, for example, uh, this, um, uh, I found this nice uh, quote from uh, Heinrich Hübschmann, uh, which uh, says in some translation, a new Persian thus uh, derives from the same proto-language as a Western and Old Persian. The same, uh, same applies, as one can easily see, to Baluchi, a variety that is quite close to new Persian. Heinrich Hübschmann at that time had uh, the project to make a comparative dictionary of Iranian languages. Unfortunately, he uh, <coughs> never finished that project, uh, but uh, he was interested in all Iranian languages that he could get hold of. Um, he was uh, also uh, from uh, Germany and uh, was a professor of Indo Iranian in Leipzig first and later on professor of Iranian studies in Strasbourg, which at that time um, the region belonged to Germany and uh, it's uh, now part of France. Um, uh, he worked uh, a lot on uh, various Iranian languages um, and he is also very important because he worked about Armenian. Uh, Armenian is not Iranian and Hübschmann was the first one to say so. Uh, other scholars thought that Armenian is an Iranian dialect because there are uh, so many Iranian words in Armenian. And uh, Hübschmann established that uh, Armenian uh, is a separate uh, Indo-European language. And he also saw that there are various layers in the lexicon of Armenian, and one of that is from a Middle Iranian language called Parthian. And uh, this uh, language, Parthian, is important for us because it is uh, also rather closely related to Baluchi. Uh, so Hübschmann uh, made very important things for the history of the uh, research about Baluchi. Now, the scholars of uh, this uh, stage uh, were all scholars of uh, historical linguistics. Uh, so the things they were interested in were etymologies and sound laws. Uh, for example, uh, uh, Christian Bartolome was the next one to find out some interesting things. He uh, wrote uh, that um, uh, the Baluchi words for father, mother and brother um, come from two different case forms. Uh, the forms uh, pis, mas, and bras uh, come from a certain stem in Old Iranian, uh, which uh, is uh, the genitive and other case form stem. 
um, uh, while uh, the, case, uh, the forms uh, pit, mud, and brad come from another uh, case form. In fact, when I was writing my PhD thesis, I uh, was uh, thinking about this problem, uh, how these uh, different forms, uh, pit <coughs> and piss, and mud and mass, uh, can uh, come about in Baluchi. Uh, and I ha had this idea that they could come from two different case forms. And it was a bit disappointing when I found out that uh, Christian Bartolome had already written this 120 years ago. But still, it's of course not embarrassing to have the same idea as Christian Bartolome. He was um, uh, also one of the most important, I think, of that period, um, researchers of Iranian languages. Um, uh, one of uh, the most important things for us that he did is his uh, very big uh, dictionary of uh, old Iranian. Uh, it uh, includes all the, uh, all the old Persian and all the uh, Western material that was available to Bartolome at that time. Mm, and although uh, this dictionary is outdated, uh, it is not replaced. No one else has ever written anything. And uh, for our um, uh, purposes here, it's uh, interesting to see that Christian Bartolome incorporated uh, Baluchi words into his uh, Western dictionary to compare them with the Western forms. Uh, so um, really, uh, it's a very uh, interesting thing to see that uh, from the outset uh, of Iranian studies, um, Baluchi was included. Um, I uh, scanned here a page from uh, the um, uh, dictionary by Bartolome, uh, uh, citing uh, Western uh, forms, for example, uh, Ida meaning here, um, and uh, on uh, the right uh, column you see uh, in a circle uh, that he uh, quoted uh, the Baluchi uh, form to compare with the Western word. Um, so. Uh, this is uh, very interesting to see how uh, soon Baluchi was incorporated uh, into Iranian studies, much sooner than uh, many other uh, uh, contemporary Iranian languages. Uh, the next one um, who also followed up that line was uh, Wilhelm Geiger. By the way, uh, he was uh, the father of Hans Geiger, who invented a machine to count radioactive uh, uh, things, uh, right? Uh, so uh, this machine is called Geiger Counter, and uh, this, uh, the man Hans Geiger who invented that machine was the son of this Wilhelm Geiger. Uh, so a family of uh, interesting scholars. Mm, uh, Wilhelm Geiger ma had a huge project. Um, he compiled uh, together with uh, another person this uh, Grundriss der Iranischen Philologie, which I photographed here, it's uh, huge volumes, and in uh, these uh, works um, they uh, compiled all the knowledge of their time about Iranian languages and literature, and uh, Geiger himself um, wrote the article on Baluchi in this work, um, and Geiger also wrote uh, various other articles about Baluchi. Uh, here I uh, listed some, so uh, you can see that in the course of three years, uh, Geiger had published uh, four extensive articles about Baluchi um, and uh, then also the chapter in this uh, Grundriss. <coughs> um, so uh, Geiger again, like uh, Christian Bartolome and uh, Heinrich Hübschmann, was interested in the history of uh, the languages um, and uh, so in this uh, Grundriss uh, made uh, this interesting uh, statement, which uh, of course is very nice to quote on such occasions uh, such as this. Um, uh, so, uh, saying approximately something like this, uh, among all Iranian languages or contemporary Iranian, Iranian languages, Baluchi stands out uh, for its closeness uh, to the origins, it preserves the, the old Iranian voice that stops in all positions and represents in all important points of its consonantism a stage which dates back from present times by 1,500 years. Uh, 1, years. Well, uh, no matter whether that uh, calculation is uh, correct, we now uh, turn to uh, other works by uh, Wilhelm Geiger. Um, first of all, he started uh, to publish uh, some texts with translation. Um, as he himself says in this article from 18... 89. It was uh, very um, uh, difficult for him to understand the Baluchi texts because he didn't have any Baluch uh, helping him with uh, the understanding and also some of his sources were written in Arabic script which does not know some vowels so it was quite uh, difficult for him to transcribe um, and uh, translate the text but uh, still he uh, tried to do so um, and uh, as he um, notes here 
um, that uh, with this article he also wanted uh, to um, draw people's attention uh, to uh, the Baluchi language and uh, to the fact uh, that uh, they should collect whatever material they can um, and uh, bring it somehow to uh, the colleague's attention because uh, for himself it is uh, very difficult to get a hold of any materials. Um, and now uh, we want to turn uh, to our real topic, uh, Baluchi dialectology. Um, apparently, so far as I uh, saw, uh, apparently the first one who noted that there are at least two major dialect groups within Baluchi was a certain um, uh, scholar called uh, Marston, uh, who wrote some uh, grammar and vocabulary of Makrani Baluchi, um, and uh, he uh, introduced um, a, term, uh, a distinction between uh, two dialect groups, um, which was followed by Geiger. Um, and uh, they uh, distinguished between a southern and northern dialect, which in our terminology nowadays, uh, the southern dialect would be western and southern Baluchi, Rakshani and Makshani, and the northern dialect, so called by Geiger, uh, was, um, uh, is in our terms eastern Baluchi, or the speech of the Mari and Bukti. <coughs> Uh, so, um, and uh, Geiger uh, noted uh, that uh, this is a very important distinction and he wrote a whole article about uh, the uh, dialect distinction within Baluchi. Um, so uh, let's look at uh, the dialect uh, distinctions uh, that he found. Um, he posited uh, some, uh, some rules uh, or uh, laws. Um, and the first one is uh, some uh, aspiration uh, of word initial consonants that's not so important uh, today. We think that's probably uh, not a very important thing. Um, uh, the second thing is much more important. Uh, Geiger noted, and uh, this uh, still stands today, of course, uh, that a uh, um, major um, difference between uh, southern and western Baluchi on the one hand and eastern Baluchi on the other hand is uh, that uh, stops uh, after uh, vowels are changed to something else in eastern Baluchi like uh, Gwad being a post Gwad or Gwas in eastern Baluchi and uh, similarly Reik being a uh, post to Reik uh, and so on. So uh, this of course makes a huge difference uh, when you apply to the whole lexicon. Mm. A uh, similar thing uh, happens uh, to uh, other uh, uh, consonants after uh, vowels, uh, like uh, ch being uh, changed to sh and so on. Um, <coughs> so uh, there are a lot of important uh, differences between these two dialects uh, groups uh, that uh, Geiger found, at, uh, which uh, is still valid today. Um, Geiger then noted that there are also differences within these two dialect groups, but his material did not allow him to say anything more detailed about it, and he again asked uh, people to bring um, new material. Okay, so for example, one thing he noted, um, but couldn't yet uh, um, sort to various dialects, uh, was a difference between a long U and long E in Baluchi words like uh, buta or but being um, opposed to beat or beta or bitha in other Baluchi dialects. Uh, so that was something he noted, uh, but uh, he wasn't yet uh, sure to which uh, region of uh, Baluchi this difference belongs. So, um, uh, as Geiger had hoped, a new material uh, was published uh, specifically, again, from the Eastern Baluchi dialect. Um, and uh, this material, together with the earlier material, uh, was assembled um, by uh, George Abraham Grierson. Um, he was a very interesting scholar. He wrote a monumental work, a linguistic survey of India, which I uh, photographed here uh, being uh, in our library, so uh, it's a really huge thing and it's amazing for us today how all these early scholars without any computer and any uh, other uh, device could um, make such huge works and uh, compile all the knowledge of their time. So it's uh, really astonishing and uh, very good for us and still extremely useful today. Um, so. Uh, Grierson um, made a little revolution in terms of terminology uh, about um, uh, Baluchi dialects. Um, he replaced the previous terms Southern and Northern Baluchi by the more ex exact terms Western and uh, Eastern Baluchi, but still um, he uh, only had a two-way uh, dialect uh, differentiation. So uh, Grierson's Western Baluchi is what now uh, we uh, talk about as a Southern and Western Baluchi, and Eastern Baluchi has remained to be such uh, in, in this form. 
Um, uh, for example, um, yeah, uh, one of the things uh, that Gleason uh, noted uh, that had not been known uh, before is uh, this uh, difference between was and was in Eastern Baluchi dialects. Uh, Gleason says, I'm not entirely sure how uh, true this is, but still he says uh, that uh, was um, belongs to uh, other provinces and was belongs to the Eastern Baluchi of Sindh and similarly for uh, other examples. Um, another person who wrote about this was uh, Georg Morgenstierne, and this is uh, the second Norwegian in our collection after Christian Lassen. Um, he, uh, yeah, um, he was a professor of Indo-European, uh, Indo-Iranian linguistics in Oslo, um, and uh, wrote uh, several works about uh, Baluchi and related languages. He also compiled an etymological uh, dictionary of Pashto. Mm, and uh, he went to uh, what is now Pakistan and uh, did a lot of research uh, on various uh, small minority languages. Uh, very interesting uh, things. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, then the next thing that happened um, was a, a new dialect uh, came to our uh, collective attention. That was uh, the Baluchi being spoken in Turkmenistan. Um, it uh, was uh, researched uh, by uh, so, uh, various Soviet scholars, uh, texts were collected, grammars were written, um, and uh, things like that. And um, uh, unfortunately it's uh, very um, uh, difficult for me uh, to find uh, biographic data or photos uh, of, that, uh, of these uh, Soviet scholars. Uh, usually uh, not much is published about uh, their life. Uh, so uh, this um, uh, uh, I selected uh, this colleague uh, to uh, stand as an example for the Soviet scholars because uh, just uh, I happened to have a photo of her and her details uh, of her life, so uh, that's uh, the reason. But uh, um, uh, also the other reason, of course, is that what she wrote is very important for, Bol for Baluchi studies. Um, she wrote uh, the chapter on Baluchi in uh, the um, multi-volume uh, book Yaziki uh, Narod of SSSR, uh, which means uh, the languages of the people of the Soviet Union. So, um, since Baluchi is spoken in Turkmenistan, um, Baluchi was also a language of the Soviet Union and therefore included uh, in this survey. Um, she uh, also um, uh, wrote grammars of Middle Persian, of a Parthian, which was mentioned before uh, about uh, Heinrich Hübschmann, um, and uh, is uh, thus very important uh, for um, Baluchi, uh, and uh, she's also a co-author of the Etymological Dictionary of the Iranian Languages, which is being produced in Moscow. Um, yeah, another thing uh, that she wrote uh, is a grammar of uh, Gilaki. Gilaki is another language in Iran, um, and uh, I think it's uh, very closely related to Baluchi in some respects, uh, so I mentioned this here as well. Okay, the next phase of collection of materials saw some new material from Afghanistan <coughs> and from uh, other parts uh, and some new survey articles. Uh, Josef Elfenbein produced uh, several survey articles um, in the 1980s. Uh, so. Um, this put uh, uh, everyone in the position of uh, knowing more about uh, Baluchi dialectology. Uh, for example, it was seen that uh, Afghanistan and Turkmenistan Baluchi are very closely related, um, and they uh, share um, some features that are not found in other Baluchi dialects. For example, there is no H in their dialects, um, but there is an interesting uh, thing in the nominal case system. There's an additional case called locative recently, um, and its endings are ya for the singular and an ya for the plural. Um, and uh, also something which is uh, different from other Baluchi dialects is that uh, the past tense um, is uh, different in terms of grammar from, for example, southern or eastern Baluchi. For example, uh, you would say, man do shi wati me shan maritun. Uh, last night I counted my sheep with the in on the verb uh, indicating uh, the first singular of um, being the uh, agent of that sentence. Uh, so uh, surveying our terminology, we started out uh, from an opposition between southern and northern Baluchi dialects being transformed then by Grierson into western and eastern. Uh, then Josef Elfenbein um, formulated a six-way uh, dialect division into a number of um, uh, sub-dialects uh, and then at some point the suggestion came up uh, to have a three-way a dialect distinction between Western, Southern, and Eastern Baluchi, uh, published by uh, Karina Jahani at various points, but uh, also uh, by some uh, other people. 
Mm, I think uh, that uh, this three-way dialect distinction is quite nicely shown uh, by the past tense uh, of some uh, verbs which end in ch or j. Um, uh, I think that uh, the distribution is something like this, uh, that uh, forms like uh, tatk, or atk, or etk belong to southern Baluchi originally, um, and that forms like uh, taht, or reet, and bot uh, belong to western Baluchi, whereas eastern Baluchi has uh, things like tahta, achta, richta, buchta, um, and I think this nicely shows this uh, three-way dialect distinction. Uh, in fact, uh, these um, uh, different forms were observed already by Geiger, uh, but he couldn't yet um, attribute them to various dialects. Um, now I tabulated uh, various uh, features uh, showing uh, the um, which things uh, are common to southern and western or uh, western and uh, eastern Baluchi, but I think it would take too long uh, to talk about all this. Uh, so um, we'll uh, say something about Iranian Baluchi now. Mm, uh, most sources uh, I talked about uh, until now are not from Iran. The oil sources are all of them from what is now Pakistan. And so the Iranian Baluchi dialects came uh, to our uh, attention uh, only rather late. Uh, they share a certain bit of different pronunciation, like uh, E being pronounced as E, mm, and things like that, um, and uh, also some uh, other interesting features. Uh, so still, um, we know quite a bit about Baluchi dialects, uh, but still we keep doing research and keep finding interesting things. Uh, for example, uh, quite recently, um, uh, a friend of mine collected a text in which occurs this sentence um, from Iranian Baluchistan, Shodagan Hamu Hakime Jaha Hosehan Ya Ha meaning they went to that chief's place, to Hossein Horn's place, yes. Um, and the interesting form in this sentence is this Hossein uh, Horn, yeah, because it looks like the locative case in Turkmenistan Baluchi, um, and I think it confirms a view that I published some years ago, that originally uh, this construction means at someone's place, because uh, there is a taboo in many languages on, uh, of the world that you couldn't, uh, car cannot put a person into a locative case. For example, in English, uh, you need to say at the baker's. You, you, uh, you can say uh, at the hotel, but you can't say at the baker. You need to say at the baker's, meaning at the baker's place. So um, I think uh, this biology construction uh, is uh, structured uh, along the same lines. Mm, another interesting sentence uh, I recently found uh, is uh, something um, uh, sounding like Sheda Shone Da Tagan, meaning from here, uh, someone uh, is saying, he showed them the direction, and the an on da tag uh, seems to refer to the indirect object, uh, and this is an interesting construction because uh, something like that also occurs in Middle Persian and uh, some Kurdish dialects and, uh, and so on. So you see, um, our dialect map uh, looks um, rather full, but in fact there are a lot of white spots uh, on it, um, and uh, all of us uh, are always very grateful for uh, all the Baluch uh, who are cooperating with us and uh, uh, with uh, whom we can collect our texts. So, thanks a lot. Thank you.